Okay, so in general, these are the indications that we're getting. One thing to clean up here, we see the 950 right there. That is the altitude. And right now, since I have this switch in LD, and remember this from the startup, I had it initially in LD. I want to put this to RHM, and that's going to then give me radar altimeter data right there in that position. I'll get that right now, in fact. RHM, now it turns to 620, which is the radar altitude that I'm getting. Does that sound right? That sounds a little high, actually. Okay, there we go. I'll live aloud. Now it's more like 350 for the, uh, the current radar altitude, which still seems in meters. It's been so long since I've flown in track IR that, yeah, I'll take it that that's working absolutely correctly at this point. Now, other indications, I've already talked about velocity vector. Now, the indications in the middle right there is just the reticle that gives us nav data and then an idea of how far off track we are with these other pillars. And like I said before, if I hit the altitude or the reference button on the stick, it gives me a new reference altitude and I can tell how far I am from the altitude that I designate by how far these pillars are from that horizontal line. I have another altitude reference given by this line right here. This line is going to be a 100 meter reference. So I can tell just in general, just by eyeballing, that I'm at one, two, three, four hundred meters or so in relation to this solid line up here. So even if I don't have a number, yeah, 410, I can gauge it by using this as a yardstick for 100 meters. If I had time on target set up correctly before, I would have, yeah, like I was pointing out, different indications on the velocity vector to get me on time on target. I have other uh, timeline references at the bottom. And again, since I sort of botched the setup on this specific mission, that's not going to be valid. We'll see that a little later, I think. Whole track with reference bar. Yep, one, two, and three degree. And I've already covered all of that. I've already covered the radar in altitude index and digital altitude. I've already covered course scale. And the only thing that I haven't seen is the time and distance line at the bottom. We'll, we'll get to that a little later. Okay, now I want to start to dig into rocket employment. Okay, M70 rocket pods. I have two of them loaded. It's going to be the same procedure here for the rockets, I think, in all aspects as we're going to use for the gun pods. So we should knock out that as well here. I have three modes that I can use. If I'm in master mode A and F on the master mode dial, it's the normal mode. If I'm in the nav mode, I have a quick mode that I can uh, do just to pop around and roll in on something that I see, target of opportunity type thing. And then a long range mode. I'm just going to look at the normal mode and then if I get to it later, we get to it later for the others. Okay, the basic profile, I'm going to run in, pop up. It's going to be master mode to A and F. Okay, here we go. Here's how it's going to look in the HUD. So once I go to A and F, I'm going to get a circle down here over the target location. Once I roll in, I need to line up the reticle. It's going to look, I think, something exactly like this. Just line the reticle up with the target. It's switch on. I'll get a fin on top to tell me that the radar is going and the target circle will go away and I'll just use the little pipper, the little reticle in the middle to line up. Two seconds before the latest firing range, the distance line flashes and then half a second, the fire signal appears. So I'm taking that to mean that I roll in, I get the flash. Once I see the wings, I fire, the person hold the trigger, everything comes off and then I just pull up and we'll see all this in real time as I go. I'm probably gonna do one dry run and then one real run. Okay, so let's get the basic setup. Weapon selector to attack. Attack. Release mode switch to Siri. Siri. Set current altimeter pressure QFE. Now let's go to the knee board and to the table right here. B3, QFE, I want 941.1. So let's go for the dial. And 941.1. I'll take that as good enough for now. Let's go. Okay, master mode, A and F, or nav and unsafe. So I can either go to the A and F position or I can just go trigger up. A and F is optional, I guess. Trigger unsafe. Fire between the earliest and latest, latest firing distances. Evade, pull up with 5Gs. Safe, master mode, nav. Got it. Now one other thing that I could do here is designate a pop-up point to guide me to a point 
where I would pop up, turn to a specific course to the target, roll in, and dive on the target. I'll actually have a link below in a, a video that Cobra did uh, displaying that. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to gauge down here based on the angle I'm offset to the target and the distance where I want to roll in and pop up from. Right now, I just don't know how far out I want to pop up, and that's what this dry run and this first attack run is really going to, going to tell me. And this is how I do it in the A-10, in fact, so you don't really have to set a pop-up point. You can just offset yourself a little bit, and then once you're to the proper distance, then roll in uh, just, using, just using normal instruments. Now, one other thing I want to do is scope out this, this line and the guidance given by the ADI. Okay, there we go. T and F, different slave SI uh, settings. So, with it in F, apparently I'm getting good guidance right here when it comes to the ADI. Now, let me punch in another reference altitude. Okay, there we go. We see it's centered back up in the HUD, and I get a reference altitude indication right there in the ADI. That's, that's perfect. Okay, I've got that scoped out, so... I'll, I'll revisit this switch. I don't want to get bogged down. I've sort of got so much going on in my head right now. One more thing is going to be overload. Let me navigate out here. I'll uh, run through this in my head a couple of times. I'll be back once I'm ready to start an attack run. I'll be right back. Okay, back with you now. I was just playing around with some ground collision type stuff and indications that I get right there. Now I'm going to have a whole bunch of different modes and I'm just trying to scope out which mode or what is actually kicking off the altitude warnings at these at different points. Let me get myself squared away right here. And come back in here. I'll just scroll through this. You can probably in real time since I'm doing a whole lot of different stuff here tell exactly what's going on as I get to these different points. Let me pull up a little bit. But yeah, in other words Either it's sensing an elevation change, it's outside a certain uh, distance, it's sensing that I'm within seven seconds of a collision. If I'm in altitude hold, it gives me a whole other set of warnings and different warnings for different situations. Is that AAA coming at me? It is. Hold on. I am. I was down there heads down so far, I got into the target area. Yeah, the target's like right there. Okay. I told you I was at the tax saturation point. Let me back out here. I'll fly in the opposite direction for a little while. Let me complete my thought right there that I had going on when it comes to ground collision. Okay, different modes depending on the different weapons that we have selected. And I think right now it's just giving us the elevation change warning, telling us that advisory that there's an elevation change uh, coming up. So, yeah, in either case, yeah, light equals bad and take appropriate action. Okay, now, let me come around and start to get set up here. Okay, 20 kilometers. I was glancing down here and I had not noticed that it switched from the mile setting to kilometer setting, so I saw it like right there and around like 10 kilometers, like, oh well, I got plenty of time. Okay, so let's come on around here. I wanted to set up, I'll turn right and then whatever heading I end up on, I'm going to offset myself just a little bit to the right, pop up, roll into the left, fire the rockets, and then egress. And this first attack run is going to be a dry pass, so I'll be right back. Okay, then the radar, I don't know if I've even pointed this out or not. I have the circle right here. Yeah, I did point this out in the uh, when I was getting the radar fixed. I have the circle right there giving me guidance and a visual cue on where this target is at. It's going to be out here just beyond, I think it's the second ridge, the one with the trees. That's at 20, okay, I'm down to 15, 16 kilometers at this point. And this is a lot of drag on the aircraft. I want to come in here with a little bit more airspeed. So I'm going to engage the afterburner just in the first stage, conserve a little bit of fuel. Okay, so I'm approaching the point where I want to pop up. Uh, I'll do it at about uh, six or seven kilometers. Fast aircraft like this, or relatively fast aircraft, it's going to be a different setup than I do in the ATM. I'm going to go to A and F preemptively. So now I should just be able to, using the reticle that we see right there, pop up, sight on the target, and be good to go. Okay, 10 kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and pop up. Let's roll out. Okay, target in sight right there. Okay, let's see what the indications of the HUD give us. Okay, copy mud spike. 
Okay, we can see the circle right there. That's where the nav system thinks the target is. I know the target is right there, however. I'm going to go trigger up. Okay, I've got the indication telling me that I'm getting radar ranging. I just need to get tracking on that target. Okay, there's the indication for range down there at the bottom. Once it, okay, it starts to blink, that's where I would fire. Pull up, and off, right. Okay, I think I've got, I've got the sequence there nailed down. Okay, so this will be a firing pass once I come back around and set up. And I got kind of slow there. Well, not really. About Mach 0.7, Mach 0.6 or so. Uh, I think with different stores, I think the most... I've got like the most uh, drag intensive stores combination that it's possible right now. Can we go trigger safe? And I'll go back to nav mode. And I'll come back out here and set up one more time on that. Okay, I think I've got that nailed down now. And we saw the error in position that we had by that circle. And that's why getting those nav fixes, that's why getting that QFE dialed in perfectly is going to matter. And I think, reflecting on it for a second, based on what I just saw there, even if we're off a little bit, it's not really going to matter that much because the final guidance is going to be derived from the radar ranging data in this mode. In other weapons, I think it might matter a little bit more, but... Uh, since we're getting the radar data on the terminal phase of that approach, I think we just need the other stuff to get us into the right area and to be able to identify the target. That's the key, is just getting that right so we can identify the target. Okay, there was one other thing that I wanted to do. It just occurred to me. Okay, I'm going to break off on this one because this is actually kind of important. It occurred to me as I was on that attack run. Now, in tactical mode... I need to disable a function of the gun sight. I don't have to do this, but I want to. Okay, right here, it says disable target motion measurement. And what happened there is I was diving on the target. The position of my reticle was being fed into the system. And if the reticle is moving, it's going to assume that the target is moving as well and compensate for that automatically. That could be good if you're firing at a moving target, bad if you're firing at a stationary target. So I'm going to disable that by going to tact or tactical on the dial here I'm going to input 221 enter okay so tactical input 221 enter and that should be in I think that was a good load right there so now okay now I'm squared away now this is going to be the real firing pass I'm going to recycle nav and get the A and F here in just a second I don't think it matters when we do that but that's how I'm going to play it. Let me go ahead and get set up again. I'll be right back. Okay, running in again. I've got the target set up to the right this time. So it's going to be a pull up, turn right, sight, trigger, fire, A and F. Okay, so now I've got the reticle in the HUD and I've got the target inside. I could obviously fly a lot lower than I am right now, but I'm not going to, to take my chances. Okay, so let's pop up. I think I could do, a little, do with a little bit of afterburner right here, just stage two. Uh, why not? Stage three. I got plenty of fuel. Okay, I could probably do this. I don't know. I could probably get a little bit closer. I don't want to get myself behind the aircraft. I'd rather do it from a long ways out, especially on this first or second try. Okay, we can see the estimated position. I've got the actual position right there. Trigger up. I just need to wait till the fire indication is in. Okay, there's the range. Two seconds. Fire. I let the nose come down. I'm going to... I would normally just pull up right away. I wanted to keep the nose down to see the impact just in case the external view doesn't come out. Okay, there we go. That was... That went extremely well. That was a good run right there. Now, let me get my head sort of back into the game right here. Throttle up. I'll even plug in the burner a little bit. Okay, trigger safe. I think I'd already got that. Now, nav... And I thought it would have automatically sticked me over to the steer point that I need. Four is my next steer point. Okay. Okay, throttle back. And now I'm just navigating back. And I know there's going to be a left-hand turn, but I sort of built in a, an offset here, knowing that I would just egress in this direction, no matter what, and then turn left once I got on here and started to get masked by this terrain. Okay, so... So I think that was a, uh, a pretty good pass. Okay, there's two. I was waiting to hear him call out that he had a visual on the 
air defenses. I was going to maybe have him attack, but yeah, I was just too preoccupied right there to really do anything with the poor guy. Okay, coming around here, and this is exactly the egress route that I wanted just to get down here. Okay, let me actually go flight formation, if I can find it, F5, go trail. And that'll just keep him kind of off the terrain and just have him follow me on out. As this is the path that I wanted to take, and it's just going to be a left-hand turn once I get up here into this valley. And it's just going to be clear sailing from there on out, all the way out to Nauchik, Gilch State. Yeah, I plugged in the burner right there. Boy, that burner. I could have swore the last time I looked down there was like up at 80%. I plugged in the burner a little bit on that attacker, and now it sucked me down to 55. As long as I keep this needle above these needles, I'm good to go. And I'll tell you what, just in case I can't get an external view going, I'm going to exit the mission and restart from right here, and uh, sometimes the track replay that I use desyncs. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll be back in uh, just a bit.